Hey my dudes, welcome back to All The Mods 9. Now you may have seen in the flyover, we've done a little bit of decoration here and there. I've added a retaining wall and a staircase that's going to lead us down to where we're going to have our farm in today's episode. I've got my to-do list and there's a lot on it, so let's jump in and get going. Okay, so let's take out our computer, our pocket computer, basically an iPhone, sure. And what have we got on today's to-do list? Well, number one, we've got to move our base. What that means is we've got to get our stuff from down over there and bring it all the way up here and put it into our house. Easy stuff. Next up, we've got to build a jumbo furnace. Now, really what I want to do is get some kind of ore duplication going. Like as in like one iron ore makes two bars, that'd be good. But for now, I want to mess around with all of the very early things that you can do in the mod pack. Because not all of you guys want to go at like Mac 10 and storm all the way to like hyper diamond supremium armor. And you know what? Doing things simply has its merits and can be quite fun. So a jumbo furnace is what we're going to check out. We're also going to check out some botany pots, which are another great way to get some early farming done. Likewise, animal feeding troughs from farming for blockheads are a great way to get early animal breeding automated. And we're going to top it all off by building a warehouse for our colony. Amazing. Well, let's get going then. We got our work cut out for us. But before we get going, I'm going to show you some of the things I've changed around the house. So let's take a look at this staircase that I've built and show you guys how it connects up to the co Oh, no rain. Well, you know what? Rain's fine. I'll just turn the volume down. So yeah, basically, uh, I spent a while, used a lot of cobblestone, oak logs, and oak fences, along with some spruce for the stairs, to make this pretty gnarly set of stairs to get down to where we're going to do our farm. Pretty cool. Oh my god. It's a thunderstorm. Okay, I'm not, I don't want to risk getting zapped by lightning, so we are going to sleep through this. Oh, what am I doing? I've got a sleeping bag. So yeah, as you come down the stairs... Oh, look, a skeleton. Let's get his bones, because bone meal's going to come in handy this episode. Nice try, sucker. Ah, uh, the old strafe technique. Old school Quake Pro. Anyway, oh man, I haven't played, like, an FPS. Well, no, I play Overwatch quite a lot. So yeah, basically halfway down the stairs, we've got like um, this tunnel that leads out to the rest of the colony. Eventually what I want to do to make things quicker is use elevators, but colonists won't use elevators. So I like the idea of having stairs here and there. But anyway, yeah, I'll get my shovel out. Well, I can do a little bit right now. And we'll basically build a path that hooks this up down to the main colony. We've got the builder's hut here, the town hall over there. It's all going to hook up quite nicely. Now I flattened out this area, leveled it off, added some dirt, removed some dirt, and trimmed a load of grass. And I haven't made myself like a massive area, but this is quite big and it's going to come in quite handy for putting down our first basic farm. And of course you have this retaining wall. Now I spent quite a while doing this wall because I like these walls to look quite pretty and beautiful. I gave them a bit of depth, some cobblestone stairs, fences, and of course trap doors to give these wooden logs just a bit of depth and a bit of a tombra, as I like to say. So boom, let's get back to the list and crack on. So number one is a jumbo, wait, no wait, number one is move the base. Okay, yeah, well that's something we can do. Might be quite boring for you guys to watch because I'm basically just going to be ripping up all of the stuff from my, uh, my, what the hell? Oh my god! Oh no, the first casualty, Roland McPoodle. Oh, rip in peace. Well, let's go and see what got him. Because we, I, th I think we slept through the night. There shouldn't have been anything gnarly. Maybe that thunderstorm spawned something. Let's go and take a look. It's good that we get a waypoint though. Oh, it's a spider, son of a gun. Get out of here, you scum. Vengeance for Roland. There we go. He didn't have anything in his grave because he had no job, basically, so not really an issue. Oh no, he did. He had some bread and some egg. Well, great. Ah, oh, so I'm sorry, Roland McPoodle, whether that's one or two Patreon members. It looks like you died before you even had a job. Well, it's okay. You'll be remembered fondly. Question is, though, who's going to arrive to take his place? Because while there's only three colonists... Oh, look. He's already here, it's Cheesy Reeves. Anyway, let's go start clearing out our base and moving things up to the house. 
Ooh, also, yeah, we've got loads of cows and sheep, and these are going to be great to get going with our automated animal breeding farm. Oh, and Astra, you can come and live in the house now. Isn't that fantastic? No more dirt hovel for you. So I'm just going to gather all this up, and I'll see you in a sec up at the house. So we do have, in this mod pack, mega torches. Check it out. And they're going to come in really handy for stopping monsters from raiding our colony and killing our dudes, like Roland just now got wasted by that spider. What I also want to do is actually try and dig out through this cobblestone, because I think this way leads straight out to near the builder's hut. And if we can dig out that way, we can create another way to get into... Oh, wait, oh, what's this? Oh, no, it, it meets the retaining wall. Okay, well, we can, we can, we can do something with that. Ah, uh, yeah, it comes out right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this wall a little bit and give us another way to get into the house. But for now, we're just going to keep it pretty ugly and build ourselves like a crappy staircase here. So this is quite a big change for us. Why are we doing a warehouse first before building a tavern? The reason is because I'm using the builder to build buildings and uh, the warehouse is a great place to start because we need it to store all of the building materials. Anyway, I'm going to build some chests and get this whole area brought up from the hovel. Whew, okay, there we go. Everything is cleared out now. All of my workbenches, all of my chests are empty. And uh, up there in the house, there's only one thing remaining here. I'll give you the most important part of our home. She is what makes a house a home. That's right, it's Astra. Come here, girl. Come with me. We're going to go up to your new home. Is she going to come? Hello? She's doing the follow thing, right? Yeah, there we go. Get out here. You coming? Yeah, there we go. All right, girl, let's go. So here we go. Let me show you how I've organized the uh, the chest so far. I've just chucked them in the corner right now, just out of the way. We're going to have a computer system eventually. So the storage here is not a permanent option by any means. But we've got organics and food up in the top. We've got minerals, bars, and ores in the next chest. Then we've got tools, placeables, and things we can use. And in the last, we've got basically important building materials. Okay, so to-do list, number one is done. Press one. Number two is the jumbo furnace. Okay, so what is a jumbo furnace? Well, a jumbo furnace quite literally is just a really big furnace. You need to put 27 furnaces in a three by three by three cube and it creates a jumbo furnace. So we'll need some more cobblestone for one. Luckily we've got the dank, so we've got loads of this stuff. Okay, so 27 furnaces. Now what we could do is put this whack bam right in the middle of this room, but I think that would look really ugly. Instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna embed this into the wall. How about this one at the back right here? We'll find the middle roughly here. Oh wait, that's not symmetrical. Three and two. Oh no, conniptions. Anyway, we're going to dig out a three by three hole in this wall. Oh, now we're actually inside the retaining walls here. So we've got to be careful because I think this is where the monsters are hiding. So yeah, we'll just clear this out. And if we put down 27 furnaces, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, et cetera. Now the moment of truth, will this work? Yeah, it did. Jumbo furnace. And it looks pretty cool. So now when we right click on this, it actually has, well, nine spots for fuel, nine spots for materials. We don't double anything, but it's still pretty good. So what is this mod from? Jumbo furnace. What else is in this mod? Jumbo, nothing. It's literally just the jumbo furnace. Okay, pretty cool. Now I've been updating all the mods 9 as it goes because right now the mod pack is pretty early stages. It's risky because I do risk making my world unplayable, but I feel like if that happens we can just go back to the last backup. But it does mean mods are being added 24 7. Boom, so we can cross that off our list. Jumbo furnace, off you go. Number three, here we go. Now we're getting to the real juice. We're gonna do some actual farming, my dudes. You excited, Astra? No, she's not, she's a cat. But uh, if she wasn't a cat, she might be excited because botany pots are pretty freaking amazing. So if you remember older kitchen sink mod packs, they're basically bonsai pots. You put a crop in it and it grows automatically. 
That sounds cool, but what's even cooler is a hopper botany pot that automatically empties itself. So basically, at the moment we have like a really cool forest over there, which is where we've been getting our spruce, our oak, and our birch from. But you know what would be much easier is if we don't have to have the whole forest thing, we don't have to have a forester from mine colonies. Instead, we just have a couple of hopper pots creating us loads and loads and loads of logs. It's not very quick. In fact, botany hopper pots are pretty slow. But what's really good about them is they're automated, 100%. So you can just fire and forget and not worry about it. So what is a botany pot and how do we make it? Well, we're gonna need some terracotta, a flower pot. And then to make it a hopper botany pot, we're gonna need a hopper. And a hopper isn't too bad. We've got loads of iron, so this shouldn't be too much. So it's time to put our first haul of iron to good use. So it is quite tricky working out what you should do with your first load of iron from mining. It can be tempting to go straight into ore duplication. Now the number one big thing is basically a use for your copper. If you use copper to make a hammer, you can literally instantly double your iron ore into bars. And that's what we really should have done last episode. I just got a bit distracted and chucked it all into the smelter, but that's not a problem. Other ways to duplicate your ore include using create, crushes from create. They're a pretty cool, visually impressive way of doing it. I might do that down the line. In fact, yeah, I reckon I will do that. Other than that though, there isn't much going on. Now this should have mechanism in it in this version. There's complicated ways with Greg Tech, but Greg Tech's crazy complex. There's also occultism, which we kind of checked out in all the mods eight actually, but I don't like the fact that the spirits you create do decay. They're not permanent. So that's a bit of annoyance. And I think hammers are just straight up easier. Anyway, this isn't school. We're not gonna spend the whole episode looking at crafting recipes and the crafting bench. That's kind of dull. Let's make these botany pots and put them into action. There we go, five hoppers, so five botany hopper pots, and four iron left over. That'll come in handy later. I think we left some iron in here anyway. So yeah, don't worry, we're not completely out of iron yet. Let me just put these items on the left to make it easier to see what we're doing. So we're also gonna need terracotta. Terracotta is of course just cooked clay, and that's a great use for our new jumbo furnace. So let's get our shovel out. Might need a couple more shovels, so where's the tools chest? Yeah, you'll do. Two shovels should be fine. Let's go and track down some clay. Oh man, raining. Well, you know what? We've got our sleeping bag. We can keep an eye on the clock. And a little rain never hurt anybody. So where are we going to look for clay? Oh my god. Oh, I see you. It's a good thing I checked the map. Whew. <laughs> oh man. Oh man, that's the first time I've seen a mob creeping up on me via the map. You know what? I really should get my bow. Now we really don't want to make a creeper hole here. Spent ages decorating this place. Come here. Now, do creepers not blow up in the rain? Maybe not. There we go, nice. And some gunpowder. Let's get my bow, because I really do feel safer if I have a bow. So yeah, the best place to get clay is the river. The ocean that we have on our border, it's great, but it's just a little bit too deep. So we've got like a mini lake over here, or we've got the river that we went to before. Now, I kind of want to check out the lake. We went over and looked over, we went, oh, what's this? Archvoker. Oh, we don't, we don't, we don't, don't want to mess with that guy. So we got the gravel from the river before. We're going to get the clay from the lake. I want to see what the lake's like as well. It looks pretty cool on the map. So once again, a massive thank you to you guys who support me on Patreon and uh, YouTube members. Oh, it's the, uh, ah, that's going to come in handy. Didn't bring my iron pick though. Anyway, yeah, a massive thank you to you guys who are watching. And if you made it this far into the episode, I want you to put into the comments section the words Jumbo Furnace. And yeah, you might look a bit weird just putting Jumbo Furnace, but I will heart and like the comments and give myself a chuckle. As a thank you for watching this far, now, speaking of other games, I know you're here for Minecraft, but if you haven't played Baldur's Gate 3, oh, it's pretty spicy. It's a pretty spicy game. I've been enjoying it. I'm playing a Dark Urge playthrough, which is kind of hilarious. It's been causing a bit of controversy, though, because a lot of people say Baldur's Gate 3 uh, is unrealistic. Like, they spent too long making the game, they made it too good, and now other developers are crying their eyes out. 
because they can't make games as good because their shareholders won't let them. But it's a weird one, eh? Because I, I feel like Elden Ring is very similar to Baldur's Gate 3. They spent a lot of time making it and it showed and they sold loads of copies because it's a freaking amazing game. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments about Baldur's Gate 3 and like if games should be that feature complete. Because you know what? I'm tired of microtransactions and I'm tired of battle passes. There's no Minecraft battle pass, is there? No. Wait, I mean, I don't think there is, is there? Now we need a lot of botany hopper pots, but also we're gonna need clay going forwards and I hate making a journey twice. So let's gather what we can while we're here and basically, yeah, just, just break our shovels getting all we need. And in fact, also let's get some sand too. Because likewise, glass is a very common requirement for most, uh, ooh, and hang on a sec, whoa. Hello, hello, uncovered a bit of a bounty. Oh, there goes the shovels. So that's both shovels exhausted and whoa, look at the clay. We're good to go. Got a lot of clay in our packs. Oh, and in fact, this lake, oh, it goes pretty deep. Oh man, they, they've really done some amazing work. Oh, are those diamonds over there? No, it's a drowned. Time to go. Now, which way is our base? Oh man, we swam real far. So here we are, let's see what this jumbo furnace can do for us. So a reminder for me, how do you make terracotta? Well, you cook clay in a block. No sweater -oony. Oh man, so I hoped it cooked nine at the same time. Looks like it doesn't. It only cooks one at a time. Oh man, that's a real blow. But I guess it only uses uh, stone furnaces, so otherwise it probably would be a little bit OP. So next on the list is animal feeding troughs. These are going to make early animal breeding much easier, which means we can get loads and loads of the leather. And the feeding trough comes from a mod called Farming for Blockheads. Now it's not the only animal auto feeder that we can get. We can also use a chicken nest that collects eggs that chickens lay. And that's actually a really good idea to build as well. And neither of these are especially hard to do. Check it out. The chicken nest requires hay bales and planks, but the feeding trough is a little bit trickier. It needs golden carrots. So we finally have a use for the gold we got. Oh, eight. There we go, two golden carrots. Put them in the middle. And then it's what, wood, was it? I've forgotten the recipe already. Wood and hay bales. Oh, now wheat might be something that we're gonna run low on. Yeah, oh, I don't have any wheat. I thought I, I picked up some hay bales, didn't I? Did I give those all to the cows? I think I might have fed the cows all of our hay. Luckily enough, we do have a solution for this. Like I said, we're gonna get the terracotta out now and make these hopper botany pots. The recipe is hyper simple. You put a hopper there, right? I think. Ah, no, flower pots, which are clay bricks. So we need to cook up some of this clay as well. Wait, oh no. There's no way to get clay balls back from uh, clay blocks. That can't be right. Oh no, what a rookie move. Well, luckily enough, we can make a cutting board, it looks like, from Farmer's Delight to switch things back. A cutting board will come in handy because it's used for, well, a whole bunch of things. Boom, we'll need, of course, a surface to put this on. And uh, we're just gonna use a piece of cobblestone for now. Doesn't look too bad. And there we go, the cutting board. So we put some clay on here like that and now we have to slice it into blobs right click and boom back into balls so just keep this going okay so we're going to leave these clay balls cooking while we do the first couple of pots so here we go one two three one two three Right, so there we go. Here is the recipe. A hopper botany pot. Boom. Very good. Advancement made. Oh. Now you're growing with hoppers. So let's head over here out to where we're doing the farming. Now I do have this staircase, but it's actually a lot quicker just not to use it. But I'm happy with that because it does look pretty cool. I like it a lot. Now, it's a first pass. We're going to decorate it even more as time goes on. 
but I really want to get the, the actual Minecraft stuff done. The decorating can come later. There we go. Just get rid of this dude. He could make trouble for our farming. Go on. Ooh, no, 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 no. Don't blow. Yeah. So botany hopper pots, where are we going to use these? They don't actually need to be in sunlight as far as shaders go. So I think a nice place to put them is going to be over here near the stairs. They're not going to be like our main source of growing stuff, but they are going to become useful later on. So for now, we're just going to put them here so I can show you how they work. If I hold shift and put down a chest, does it make two separate ones? Yes, it does. Oh, nice trick. So if you don't want double chests, hold down sneak. And now we're going to put the hopping pots, hopper, hopper botany pots on top, like so. Okay, so when you right click on these, you get an interface that shows you the dirt that you put in the bottom and what you're growing in the top. So we'll put wheat in the middle and a tree on the left. Now, the soil that you use in a botany hopper pot changes how quickly things grow. And here's something cool that displays that. So yeah, basically, Supremium Farmland gives you 1.3 speed. That's not actually that good, considering how hard that is to get. Coarse Dirt gives you 0.95, so it's actually worse than normal dirt. A dirt path is half speed, wow, okay. Podzol is normal, Farmland is 1.05. But what we're gonna go for early on is rich soil. This is quite easy to get. And it gives you a speed boost of 1.1, which is, I mean, not incredible, but it's actually kind of almost as good as this tier three mystical agriculture land. So that's pretty cool. Oh no! Oh my God. Almost bit the dust. Okay, well, you know the rules. Time to clean up my creeper hole. How do we make rich soil? Well, it's not actually too tricky. You make organic compost leave it for a while, and it turns into rich soil. So how do we make a, a organic compost? Well, again, this isn't too tricky. Straw we can get, dirt we can get, tree bark we can get very easily. Bone meal might be a bit tricky, because the only real way of getting this is with bones, but I reckon we can do that. I think I might have some bones lying around. Okie dokie, so let's go through the steps. We're gonna want dirt, which we have, We've got loads of bone meal, not a problem either. So dirt, bone meal. It's just straw and tree bark. Tree bark you get with an ax and logs on a cutting board, amazing. And straw you get from, I think, just knifing grassy crops and plants. Well, okay, let's get the knife out. Now I seem to remember my memory is triggering something. I feel like if I hold the cutting board, oh no, that's right. Yeah, I can put the logs in my right hand, the ax in my left, and if I right click then left click. Oh no, I can just right click. Yeah, there we go. So top tip, put the logs in your right hand, ax in your left, and just, yeah, just keep chopping. So the basic idea is if you put this organic compost outside, it will eventually turn into rich soil. So we're just gonna leave it here to do its thing. I have no idea exactly how long it takes. And uh, when I hover over this time, it doesn't really say. That clock says three o'clock, but I don't think it means three hours. It's sped up by water nearby, sped up by adjacent activators like mushrooms, and it's sped up by sunlight. So what I will do is put down some water maybe. Or actually, you know what? Let's just go plonk it down near the water over here. We'll leave this to brew and come back in a bit. Actually, now is the perfect time to put down the template for our warehouse. That's the big building we're gonna be doing this episode. So have I got my build tool? No, let's go and grab that and uh, find somewhere to put it. The build tool at the top and we have the warehouse. Get the tool on our bar. Let's go and find the perfect spot. Also, I'm actually kind of curious to see what this thing looks like. Now, as far as placing the warehouse goes, the absolute best thing you can do is put it right next to the builder's hut because the biggest export from the warehouse is gonna to be to the builder's hut. So you want these two as close as humanly possible. Right click. Is it in storage somewhere, right? Craftsmanship, storage, warehouse, that's right. 
So it's pretty messy to see, but what we're trying to get is the binding boxes at the top there lined up so they're as close as possible. So the block is going to appear right there. We're going to pull the trigger, say yes. Oh, but first up, let's take a look and see what the higher levels look like. So two, three, four, and five. Wow, pretty impressive building. Okay, but level one's good enough for us. Press go. And we're ready to get building. So the build options, here we go. Ooh, so it's nothing too tricky to build this as well. All materials that we have to hand. Oh, but interestingly enough, it comes with two courier hut blocks as well. So what I think that means is this building is going to incorporate the courier's huts into the build. So when the build is finished, I can go over, right click the courier's huts inside the warehouse and just build them exactly where they are. If that's true, then that's going to be pretty cool. Okay, quite a lot of time has passed. It's not a quick thing to, it's not a quick process. So if you're going to do this at home, Make sure you put down loads of compost and leave it for a long time. But yeah, we're finally there. The rich soil has arrived. Right, a fresh day, brand new day, and we've got the rich soil. Let's put this into these hopper pots and show you how these work. So as you can see, the pot on the left now has a sapling, and the pot on the right now has, well, the wheat. So don't worry too much about... Uh, making sure the tree has room to grow, because it doesn't actually grow. The hopper just stays here with a sapling in it, and you get wood automatically underneath every now and again. But when it comes to the wheat, this stuff does actually grow. And it, I think it grows a lot quicker than it does naturally out in the wild. And so what I think I'm going to do is, because this has been quite a long episode already, we're going to cut animal feeding troughs from today's to-do list, because we're going to need a lot of wheat for it, and we can do that next episode. I think it's more important now that we get the warehouse up and running. So I'm going to load up a whole bunch of wood from this, uh, this forest over here, a whole bunch of cobblestone, and all the things this guy needs to get the warehouse built. And then we can check it out and see what those courier huts are actually doing inside there. So just like the town hall, this is a massive build that's going to require a lot of digging, a lot of chopping, and a whole load of dirt going down. But that's exactly why building the warehouse and the courier's huts are so essential early on, because we can fill up the warehouse with all the kinds of things like stone brick, cobblestone, cooked stone, all the stairs and woods that the builder's going to need for future builds prematurely. Because right now, the big problem Festa has is inventory management. Now, I would have liked to get the animal feeding trough built this episode and move my animals over to a new pen. But the other things took so much time that that's going to be next episode. Other things we're going to be working on in future include a create workshop, because I really want to get into create in this playthrough, and there's a lot of cool things we can do with it. But also, I feel like I've been coming at the colony all wrong. I used to think that we could do things with mods that would make building a colony easier, but what I've realized is, with buildings like the Engineer's Workshop, and the builder himself, what we can actually do is use the colony to make our All The Mods 9 playthrough much easier. So I'm very excited to see how the colony grows in a way that can facilitate our progress. And there we go, the finishing touches, the final steps. The warehouse is complete. Let's get in game because I want to see how these courier huts inside it work and what the next steps are. Okay, the finished warehouse. Let's jump in and see exactly what's going on in here. Now we're going to tidy this up. Don't worry, this shrub will be gone. All these leaves are going to be history. How's it going, Fester? If you don't mind, I'd like to squeeze past. Now there's a lot of room in here, a lot of scope for way more racks. In fact, actually, there is a lot of storage space in here. This is really, really, really generous. But the big question in my mind is, where has it put the courier's huts? I don't see them on this level. Let's try going up the ladder. Yep, 
yeah, here we go, a courier's hut. So if I right click on this, build options, oh my god, so we can do this right now as well. Oh, you know what, I've got to do it, I've got to do it. So we're going to build the building, it needs a courier's hut, oak stairs and torch. One of these is already in position. And let's see what happens. Also, there's going to be another one, I guess, over here. Does that mean that this warehouse in this version of the build, in the, in this theme, automatically comes with two courier huts as standard? Well, let's find out. What's he doing? Yeah, so I guess no time-lapse builds for the courier's hut. But honestly, I was thinking I might have to put the courier's huts underground, like I did in the last series, to make enough space. But if we can just do it like this... Oh my god, that's so much easier! And I guess the next courier's hut is going to be just as easy. Oh man, freaking awesome. Well, thank you for watching this episode of All The Mods 9. A massive thank you to all of my Patreon members and my YouTube members. Don't forget to be putting your names into the naming post on either YouTube community area or on my Patreon. Next episode, we get to assign two dudes to be couriers, as well as we're going to work on the animal troughs. And also next episode, we're going to check the botany pots to see how much has grown while this build has been going up. But until next time, guys, a massive thank you for watching and take care.